I think we've had a great day. Has everybody enjoyed themselves? Yeah, I think we've had a great day. There's always, Nuffield every year has gone from strength to strength and there's a buzz every time I think we come into this hall every year. I know people are looking to go for food and dress up for the night out tonight, but um, I've got a graveyard shift to give you a quick summary of, what I know, well, of the day. Um, right, our topic is leadership in agriculture. We started off with our president, Bill, this morning. Um, the first thing I wrote down was that he said we had 88 scholars. John had just told us we have 83, so I'm confused. Um, it was right. Yeah. <laughs> it was right. He put up great pictures of our, um, of our recently in the headline scholars, as in Kevin Moore and, and uh, Mary Delaney. But he made a big boo one to get to put up John Buckley, who also won Dairy Farmer Deer, Young Dairy Farmer Deer. But he was ably assisted by uh, Joe Leonard, who did a great job in digging him out. Uh, Bill told us, Bill got very deep for one part of the conversation. He said, um, you give what you receive, which I think is a very good comment to take home. And he brought us this wonderful word called um, reciprocity. I, I have difficulty saying it, Bill, but uh, don't check my spelling. Okay, that's, that, that's how we started off this morning. Then we dug into the, um, the main business of the day, which was looking at the 2015 scholars. We started off with a board of three men, right, which I think Marie might have been that happy with. But uh, the three we had were John Buckley, Aidan Gleeson, and, and the aforementioned Kevin Moran. John Buckley's topic was um, people skills, and the main, the main points I took from his comments, from his presentation was, in New Zealand, staff members on farms only last about 1.6 years. Um, view all staff as an investment, he said not as a cost, which I think is a good comment. And I think he was made a call for better training of farmers so they could manage staff better. But I thought was interesting with John's, um, John's questioning. I know you noticed a lot, but every time he was asked a question, he went, thank you, that was a very good question. <laughs> and you kind of felt it was going to be an expert with, yeah, pain and the bloody <laughs> thing. Well, um, so, all right, that was John. Next, we went on to Aidan Gleeson who told us about the relationship between beef farmers and processors. I can't help but think that when he started out on this topic that um, it meant something totally different than it does today when you take Brexit into account. Um, he, went, he got some great names of farms, I noticed. He was in Grand Farms in China, and I love this one, Bustard Ranch in Canada. But I think the main, top, the main point I took from his um, presentation was that, that we should focus on common goals, i.e. the beef farmer and the processor. And he was certainly worried about Brexit, as we all are. Finally, in the, in, in the first session this morning, we had Kevin Moran. Um, his topic is about access to finance for young farmers. We know he's in the limelight, and we know that he's successful, but through the Mayo form, he got beaten by a bunch of 12-year-old female basketball players from Kenya. <laughs> what a start. Um, the two big things that came from his topic were, um, I think, this cow bank, cow leasing um, idea from Australia, which is certainly interesting to dairy farmers. And I know the bankers in the audience um, would love to find some way of financing livestock on farms, just like machinery. Okay, so that was the first session. I think that off to a great start, that we were all pretty well enthused. And then I think we got the gem of the day in, in Michael Hoy. Well, he was great, wasn't he? Like he, he could have done with no PowerPoint presentation or anything, he just stood up, he was natural as they come. As he said, he left school at 15. To me, he was a breath of fresh air. He's a, to me, he's a successful farmer and businessman. But he put it very nicely about farming. He said, when he was farming, it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. And I think every farmer in the audience or anybody associated with farming knows that. Um, he started off with 52 acres in North County, Dublin. And we know he's farming two or 3,000 acres, whatever it is at the moment. But what I thought was impressive was he spent a nice bit of time talking about the farming he was doing, helping with volunteering and having some contacts in Haiti. Because I've been there myself, and um, you can see he's really gone full circle. Uh, a very interesting stat was 18.9% of our food is now consumed outside the home. I'd say mine's about 25% in the car alone. Uh, and I say a lot of us are heading that way. Um, online is going to be huge. Um, the banks are dysfunctional at home, he told us, and Brexit is a big worry, which is a theme coming through most of, the, most of the presentations. But I think the main line I would take from Michael Hoey was honesty and trust. 
they were his two values, and I think that's the key to his success. The true farmer bit of him came out in the end when Bill went up and asked him how many trackers had. <laughs> it was a classic the old bull telling the young bull about what to do. He asked him once, he said a few. Then he asked him again, and he said, I have a few more. Then Bill presented him with a Nuffield tractor. And I think Bill was clever enough, he learned not to ask him the third time. <laughs> Michael Roy was excellent, and a good choice for the day. Right, um, the next part of the day was our president came back up, and he told us all to turn around to the seat behind us, and ask the person behind you where they were from. I don't know what the experience was like for all of you, but for me, it was nothing normal. I turned around and asked this nice girl behind me, I said, oh, where are you from? I'm from Cork. <laughs> so I replied in a similar manner. Um, we went to lunch and came back in the afternoon, and we had a more balanced panel of the final three 2015 scholars. And first up was Marie McCarthy, who is from my own neck of the woods, um, who gave us a great presentation on women and I. Um, I suppose everybody's going to talk about the standout figure of eight female board members out of 405 in the country, which is 1.9% I worked out. She's recommending 10 to 20% on such boards. Um, the one about women working in Indonesia earning a dollar a day and the men earning two dollars a day to supervise them. I'm thinking of moving to Indonesia to be honest. Um, a point that came out was the difference between the value of women in agriculture and the reality. Um, I think we were all stunned about her, with her slide on women in the 1930s. Um, I think it suffices to say that they weren't applying for nothing scholarships back then. Um, but I think to summarise her, her presentation, keyword was diversity. Next we had Joe Burke, the controversial topic of dairy beef. Joe made an excellent presentation and created a lot of audience participation. I think he was wearing the wrong jersey for a number of our dairy uh, farmers in the audience. Um, but I think, I, whereas there was a lot of talk about Jersey beef, I think to be wrong to focus on that because that wasn't the main message from his talk. That, like, there are only 2% of jerseys in the country. Um, what I took out of it, which was interesting for me, was um, that dairy beef had a significantly lower carbon footprint than sucker beef, which is something I didn't know. Um, sex semen would be a big game changer when, whenever they get it right. And he told us a very interesting uh, story about um, the Wagyu beef in New Zealand, the grass fed Wagyu beef in New Zealand. Um, I think his key message there was an integrated supply chain. A comment he slipped in on the finish, I think, which maybe some of us might have missed, um, he said, Listen to the market signals. And I think, you know, we, we were talking a lot about beef factories and farmers, etc. But it's all about the market at the end of the day. Finally, in that session, we had Brian Rush. I don't really need to say anything about Brian Rush. If any of you just log on to his Twitter account, you'll get it every day of the week, which I do. Uh, and I don't know the lad at all. Uh, farmers don't like regulation and um, rules and bureaucracy, but um, Brian introduced a, a new uh, line for me today, or a new concept today, and I call it social license. And I think it's a wonderful topic. And I think the key with Brian is you, you can link his presentation to Michael Hoey's, where they were both saying that the consumer is king. Uh, Brian was talking about bringing the consumer into the stakeholder process, and we, in the work group we had a good discussion about that and how you would do that. So um, they were the 2015 scholars. Excellent, they were all brilliant. We broke them for lunch came back in the afternoon and we went on the workshops. So I think the workshops are a good opportunity to speak your mind and do a bit of networking, meet people you might not get to talk to. Then we came on and we had the 2016 scholars, Peter Farrell, Ray Hunt, Mabel Keith, John Joyce, Tom Bedeen and Roberta MacDonald. Um, I'm really not meant to give a summary of, of their presentations, but I was getting ready myself at the same time. But what I heard out the back of my ear was that UHD milk is shite. Um, there's a lack of water in the world. Um, this is the most interesting one though. The Aussies are helping Irish Nuffields to appreciate the common agricultural policy. Now that's a new one, <laughs> and a good one as well. Um, I think Maeve Deneen wants to go making cows by hand, from what I can see. Uh, or go, or go farming in Syria. I'd stick to the making cows by hand, if I were you. 
Uh, I, I thought Roberto pulled it beautifully together by saying there's no normal after the GFP. Finally, we came to Jim Gelch. Um, Jim, who said he had the best job in Australia and I was the best job in the world, he said the Irish are well regarded in Nuffield. He said they are prosecuted well. I was trying to work that out. I was wondering were they in court or what was the scenario, but obviously we're making an impression. I was in Brazil earlier on the year and around tonight, if anybody wants to ask me about it, I've been in a lot of places in the last 30 years, but the Nuffield trip was the best trip I was ever on. Um, the Triangle Conference is on in the UK next year, and I know some of my friends over there would like us to plug that. Zimbabwe, he told us some the harrowing stories in Zimbabwe. I'm sure we've, I've met, uh, in my year it was Rob Fisher, was um, is it, a Nuffield scholar, and when I met him in 2005, this is how bad it was in Zimbabwe, he told me not to email him, that his emails would be monitored. So I haven't spoken to Rob Fisher since 2005 and would like to meet him again. Um, 2018, Nuffield International is heading to Africa. 2019, we're going to India. And I quote, I think it's Peter Farrell, it's not a holiday, what a joke. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you very much. <laughs>